Over the past 25 years, Staffordshire Wildlife Trust and the Environment Agency have worked with a plethora of partners on over 100 innovative and experimental river and floodlane restoration projects. We're working to undo the damage to the over 85% of Staffordshire's watercourses, which have been worsened by human intervention by being straightened, embanked and disconnected from their floodplains. Together with geomorphologists and ecologists, we're taking a different approach to help nature recover. Many of our schemes have been experimental and innovative. Here we take a look back at some of our flagship projects to look at the different techniques to see how we've made a difference. So we're here at the River Trent at the old Stoke City football ground. We've diverted the river, uh, created a new 500 metre section of river about a couple of hundred yards from where it used to be and it was a site of an old concrete monstrosity of the river devoid of any wildlife so we've created a lovely new renaturalized river channel even in the couple of years since it's been done we've seen brown trout use this stretch we've seen kingfishers we've seen little egrets uh, and there's been evidence of otters moving up and down so a real benefit to wildlife so diverting a river is not a small undertaking uh, it's a complex challenge we have to be really careful about flood risk the new river channel went through some former contaminated land, so we had to be careful that that was cleaned up adequately. And it's just that really sort of massive undertaking, but it is the, the best thing, the right thing to do for the river and for the ecology of the river. So it's just real opportunity to do something different using nature-based solutions, natural materials to, to create the river channel and move away from the old river. We've really helped connect the people of Stoke Town back with their river. We've really put the Trent back in Stoke. At Staffordshire University, a heavily engineered reach of the Trent was restored with split channels and backwaters and encouraged to connect with a wider area of floodplain. Before the works, it was brown, straight, uninteresting, and we never really used it for anything. Um, there were some species in it, but we didn't really know what was there because we couldn't access it and neither could most of the wildlife because of the steep banks and steep sides. So the ambition and the scale of the project was huge. Some of the benefits of this reprofiling are benefits to us, benefits to our students, also benefits to wildlife as well. And we've been able to get into the river and do some surveys. We've walked along the side of the river and we found evidence of otter. We've seen brown trout, really noticed a big difference in species that we can see and interact with. It's quite frequently used by people walking. You could see that there would be much more opportunity for species, help with flood management. You can see so many different varieties of wildflower in the summer that were never even noticeable there before. Many different bird sightings, but also a much more attractive place to come and visit and enjoy the being outside. Fish passage and natural river function through urban parts of Stoke have been enhanced through the removal of several weirs. Reach restoration along an 18 kilometre length of the Trent is continuing through our Transforming the Trent Valley Landscape Partnership. Techniques include river widening at Croxall, floodplain lowering at Tuckhall's home, mid-channel bar and chute channel creations at Rylands, and the UK's largest river island restoration at Cherry Home. So we've returned to Cherry Home to undertake some invertebrate monitoring, and also we're working with the University of Salford to do some drone mapping. 20 years ago, this whole area behind us used to be arable farmland right up to the edge of the river. It was just a single thread channel. The scheme itself was to excavate out a former channel to restore a nine hectare river island. We're really, really proud of this project. The river is now back in charge and it's dynamically able to generate its own habitats. And as you can hear behind us, we would say that the river has got its voice back. Intact head water streams are the key to the health of our main rivers. They supply clean water, sediment and nutrients and are, in themselves, biodiversity hotspots. The partners have carried out schemes to protect and enhance over 22 kilometres of these stream corridors, including at Canic Chase, the Churnet Valley and the Southwest Peak. This work has thrown a lifeline to endangered species like the white-clawed crayfish. It also helps to mitigate the impacts of drought and downstream flooding. We were also the first in the UK to use engineered log jams to protect roads and a railway. Staffordshire Wildlife approached us with the Environment Agency. The cows were going in the stream and getting the sides of the bankings down with the silt and the water was taking it down into stone and blocking the culverts. 
Staff to Wildlife put a proposal to us that they would fence out the stream and put some water troughs and pipes. It worked well for both of us. Flowers are coming back in the woods. The stream's flowing naturally now because it's not being trod in by the cows and sleepers were laid so that the cows came down the sleepers instead of down the field. This is toothwort, which uh, in Staffordshire is an unusual plant. And certainly the, the livestock fencing that's been put in now is protecting this whole woodland strip along the stream. This is just one of the results. We didn't notice this until two or three years ago that these spikes are popping up. It's actually lovely to see. Our teams are passionate about this work. We feel that the reach restoration approach is making a significant contribution to nature's recovery in the Staffordshire Trent Valley.